So welcome everybody. This is the very first of what I hope to be a series of interviews with some of the world's top female architectural photographers. And I am so excited for my very first interview. We have Miss Angie Blair uh, coming to us all the way from Tasmania. So hi, Angie. Good morning. Good morning. It's morning to you. Yep. Um, it's about, let's see, 5.30 p.m. here. So you're going to see my light changing quick. <laughs> we have uh, 9.30 on Sunday morning. 9.30 on Sunday. Well, I really appreciate I know you're a busy, busy lady, especially this time of year. So I really appreciate you taking time out to talk to me today. I'm humbled, Kim. Humbled. Well, uh, your work is fantastic. And we're going to take a look at two projects specifically later in the interview. But but in the meantime, if you can just tell me a little bit, and I know you did a really great interview with uh, AP Almanac already that got a little bit deeper into your background and your transition from real estate to architectural. But just can you tell yeah. us a little bit briefly about that? When did you start shooting? Um, how did you transition into architecture? Cool, cool. Well, um, I've been on the tools now for nearly 10 years. So in January will be my 10 year um, in photography. And I studied graphic design and got a job straight out of graphic design with a photographer. And it was to do his branding and marketing material. But it just turned out that there was more work assisting him and helping him shoot and edit post-processing than actually designing brochures and, and things for weddings. So, um, and then maybe about 2016 is when I started transitioning into architecture from real estate and weddings you know like I got rid of weddings and portraiture mm, about three or four years in I did four seasons of weddings and went uh -uh, not for me not for me doesn't uh, suit my disposition <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you there it's okay <laughs> such hard work such yeah. hard work um and so real estate really was my in for archie and interior work um because I started getting into projects that were for sale and was opportunistic in that and would take a shot for myself. And then the architect would go, oh, it, it all just, it wasn't linear. It wasn't, this is what I set out to do. I don't even think I've even mean to be an architectural photographer. It's just mm -hmm. time on tools and it's how it's progressed um, in a way that actually suits me as a photographer. Mm -hmm. um, and the more and more I do it, the more I'm saying no to. I don't want to do headshots anymore. I don't want to do. Um, but I still love including portraiture in my architectural photography. There's that fusion of. Um, it, it comes back. The portraiture and wedding experience comes back. I do see um, that, and the projects we'll take a look at later are great examples of that, where it's not just straight up pure architectural photography, it's mixed in with yeah. lifestyle, which I think yeah. really uh, puts it over the edge and makes makes yeah. your photography more oh. memorable. It has emotional impact. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I still am shooting real estate. Um, it's probably about 30% of my workload now as bread and butter. Um, I have two contractors that cover most of the load now. So they'll shoot the day-to-day, -day, get most of it done, and I'm a higher rate. So if the agents want me, they can pull me in for the higher rate. Um, but more and more, you know, agents, are, it's, it's a money-based exchange and it, it's kind of working in that sense in terms of transitioning away from. Right. Um, but I do have one agent that will pay architectural rates to have me for a half day or a full day, and I shoot it as an architectural project. That's awesome. Um, That's awesome. It's, it's really great, and um, it's probably more it's, it's building for, for her profile as well to document her properties like that. So. And that, that is a very rare thing to find an agent that w is okay with a more editorial or architectural yep. style kind of shoot usually they want wide show as much square footage make it look as big as possible obviously architectural photography isn't quite in that vein so much so that's a really um, unique and you're very fortunate to have that 
Yeah, and doing a lot of vertical vignettes and, um, you know, I make these lovely little collages for her to use on her socials and, um, yeah, so there is a bit more flexibility in that. I think, I think the thing with jumping in between real estate and design work now for me is that I go to a real estate job and I'll do one-point perspectives wherever I can because it's just, you know, I go to two, I just go, oh, no, bring it back, bring it back, come back to the one point. So, yeah, I am struggling with that fusion of, of both. Yeah. 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 I remember, mm. I remember when I was, I had a foot in each world of real estate and architecture and to flip that switch in my brain when I was doing one or the other was, was difficult. Um, yeah. And I was finding that my architectural work was starting to suffer because I was too much in show everything mode of real estate. Yeah. So yeah. it is, it's very hard to do both. Yeah. yeah. It was yeah. one of the biggest things that Barry McKenzie um, said to me, cause I flew over and hung out with him a few years ago for a workshop. He said, you can't, you can't have, you can't be in both at the same time. Yeah. Um, it's a leap of faith and but you can do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I haven't exactly just, you know, left off, you know, because some of my client relationships with the real estate agents I love and I'm, I'm happy to continue those ones that support support me, support my architectural work. Like they'll, they'll know that I'm down south shooting for a few days and will wait and things like that. So, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm nearly there but not 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 quite. Well, I think you're on your, your, your portfolio, your body of architectural work is uh, second to none. Um, so I am sure that transition, if you wanted that to happen, I'm sure that could happen yeah. someday, hopefully yeah. soon. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we met, I'll just tell everybody here, mm -hmm. something new that I happened to start only just a few weeks ago was a new Instagram feed. Mm -hmm. Um, women in architectural photography. So we're kind of talking a little bit, I think these series of interviews are also not just uh, focusing on um, the stellar work, but what is unique to us as women in this field. So if I could ask you, what, is it, what has it been like for you um, operating in this profession as a woman? I'm 100% supported by other male photographers. Um, there is the family has, is, is difficult being in, in this job um, and having children and having to work away is very difficult. Not to say it's not difficult for, for men, but um, just last week it was my son's last day of grade seven and I had three days shooting and came home as soon as I could um, so I could be here for his last day um, to have the photo with him on his, you know, when he's going to school. So, that yeah, the maternal stuff is, is big. But in terms of career development, you know, I, I, I think I'm being hired by, by word of mouth and, and by folio, you know. That's good to hear. I'm, I'm very glad to hear that. I, I was just wondering, um, we, we are outnumbered. Um, when I look around, there are tons of male architectural photographers getting to shoot for some of the, the biggest firms that I'm huge fans of. Um, mm -hmm. But when I look through all their photo credits, um, it's a lot of the times it's, it's just males. I don't, I don't see yeah. the females in there. Yeah. I don't know why that is. That's something I'm kind of yeah. trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. Is it that we just don't put ourselves out there as much as they do? Um, what are your thoughts on that? I, I definitely don't canvas. I, I, I'm not one to go inbox inbox an architect and go, hey, this mm -hmm. here's my folio. I'm going to give you a discount to, you know, uh, mm, that's, that's, not, that's not me. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe that could be part of it. I, I don't, I wouldn't have the confidence to knock on a door and turn up with a printed material going, Hey, can I have 10 minutes of your time? Really? I'm very, just, yeah, no, no, I'm under the radar. Just, just get the work done. <laughs> but it is interesting that you said that you lack the confidence to, to, you know, sort of knock on the door and, and leave a printed piece. Um, that's interesting. There, there's no reason for you to lack confidence. So I'm kind of wondering, do we all kind of yeah. have that issue a little yes. bit? Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, even even in a business sense, um, I know that I probably wouldn't be hitting day rates that some of my male colleagues would be. Uh, I just, yeah, don't don't have that uh, cell in me. You know, uh, I, I'm more likely to uh, go back and make sure it was perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally understand. <laughs> So, you know, and that's true of a lot of creatives is we care about the craft and the art, but oh, we're not yeah. so great at the business no. part, no. the salesmanship yeah. part, yeah. Uh, yeah. myself included. So um, yeah. maybe, maybe that's one of our weak spots where we need to kind of up our game. But so absolutely. can you tell me a little bit about your, your taste and your style and how it's evolved since okay. you first got started? Um, gosh, my taste, my style is becoming more, more simplistic, I think. Uh, if it's not working, I don't force it. Um, if the light's great, I, I hang with that light and sacrifice something else. Um, I used to overlight. I used to shape with light a lot. Now the flash I have is a security blanket. So we had a few <laughs> questions from viewers from uh, the group, the Women in Architectural Photography group, and they're a little redundant. They were all basically about light. So when you do okay. pull out the strobe, how do you yeah. do it? So I've got a thing against sensor bloom around windows. I, I cannot deal with it. <laughs> so, um, and there's some instances where with natural light, you, you just cannot shoot it retain a view and not have bloom around the windows. So I will pull out a flash and that's probably an old real estate trick. Um, but I'll use luminosity masks to actually blend it um, in a way that looks more natural than what a straight real estate shot would. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, also if I'm struggling with colour, I will add a flash frame so that I can have something to, to, to base my edits off. Um, I'll shape in bathrooms, smaller vignettes with light, with my um, portable flash. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But in, unless I'm having to bring in a big view or I'll, I'm trying to go as natural light as I can now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's been a transition just in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. So I think the two projects that you want to discuss later, uh, no, no flash was used at all. Really? Good for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. So aside from uh, when you're fortunate enough to have a neutral mm -hmm. surface to bounce off of, are there modifiers that you tend to prefer? I've got shoot through brollies. Um, I've got a big reflector disc that I'll sh you know, shoot into if I need to. Um, I've got the black cloth to flag off reflections, so, you know, big pieces of material that I'll take with me. Um, but no, that's pretty, it's pretty rudimentary, really. I mean, because I still move quite swiftly. And I think that's, that's part of the time on tools in real estate as well, is that I'll lock onto a composition and just know that that's, that's it. Yeah, I'm quite decisive in that way. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's dig right in then. Uh, this is uh, my favorite part. I love these two projects. <laughs> I'm going to start my screen share. Okay, so the two projects that we're going to talk about. Uh, the first one is Simmons Plains by oh. Q Studio. Is that, <laughs> am I saying that yes, right? Yes, that's right. You are, yes. Okay. So take a gander, everybody. We'll just get an overview here. Really, really cool house. Um, such a big, such a biggie. <laughs> yeah, um, that, that looks huge. How many square feet was that? Oh, uh, square feet. Uh, it's 100 square meters of house. Uh, 100 squares of house, sorry. Um, I don't know what that is in square feet. I don't either. <laughs> we'll figure it out Massive. later. Massive. <laughs> <laughs> it's big. It looks um, really big. This was a two-day shoot plus uh, multiple site visits plus floor plans drawn out with where shots would be taken. The planning on this one was was mammoth. And, and I felt the first time I turned up on site that this was a game changer for me. If I could nail it, it would actually change the trajectory of uh, my career. And it actually has. 
I, I, yeah. I can see um, that. And I'm going to go right to the image that I think is just brilliant and really, I think, um, is at, just shoots you into another stratosphere. <laughs> Tell me about this so picture. Kind. That's so kind. Um, this is Liv and Tom. Tom is the white pony and uh, Liv, <laughs> gosh, it's making me emotional thinking about I, it. Um, it's the sweetest <laughs> thing ever. Uh, we were trying to get Tom to behave and um, she's actually holding a little apple in her hand if you look very, very closely. Huh? Um, and it was uh, capturing the in-between. I mean, if I was given a brief, a prescriptive brief saying, now we're going to get pony and child and, you know, it just wouldn't have happened. They were, I got her to sit down so that it would be on a similar level. Initially she was standing up on that step and it just felt, I didn't feel as connected. So I got her to sit down. And yeah. It's just talking with her and saying, relax, just talk to Tom. Um, and... Oh. Yeah, it happened and I was there and I took the shot. You know, it's 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 my unicorn photo. I I, I don't know that I can ever top that. Um, yeah, this one I entered into the Architecture Awards and it got into the top one hundred. Oh, um, wonderful! Kind of about uh, five hundred entries, I think. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's. I printed this out and gave it gave it to Liv and yeah, it's 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 a very special photo. And then just the in terms of the design for Cumulus, it's the old and the new, you know, the steel, the steel work that connects the the older structures and the reflection. And yeah, I honestly have to leave some of that up to just being the right moment at the right time, you know. That's exactly it. Yeah. Um, and I was fortunate to hear a presentation by Emma Peter um, not too long ago, where she said she's capturing moments. Um, yeah. And she talked about how in today's age, where we're just flooded with thousands of images every yeah. day, um, so many of them are great images, and yet they, they sort of go in, well, to borrow an expression, go in one eye and out the other, <laughs> instead right, of one right. ear and out the other. Um, yeah. they don't, they're great, but they don't stick with you. And she talked about how studies have shown that the ones that stick with you are the ones that have emotional impact. Mm -hmm. And you, this, you just nailed it. You just nailed you. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. The, the connection that they have, you can tell that they're together. And, um, I think it provides scale and form and, yeah, it's honestly, it's one of my favorites. I've got it printed and it's up on my wall. So, yeah. it's, I, I don't blame you. It's yeah. everything though. It's not just being fortunate enough to have those two there and the relationship that we, and the trust and the sweetness that you see between them. Um, but your, your processing on this entire set is fantastic too. We'll, we'll take a look at all of it, but this one in particular, the monochromatic nature of it, um, yeah. It's a white horse against a white building <clears throat> and then her black jacket against the more, mm -hmm. up against the more black portion. Yeah. Just the yeah. simplicity with the, the subtle, very subdued hues. It's basically close to a black and white, very close to it. Yeah, I, 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 would, I, I did um, take a lot of the saturation out of this one for sure. And, and, and the sun, uh, it was kind of backlit. So it was yeah. later in the afternoon. Um, I think when you go out and you see the them walking against the barn, this is kind of the other side of, of, of that building. Um, okay. yeah. So, just yeah, and there's a more there's a more playful version where I've come straight onto them. If you can come out, yep, you know. I do see that here. Yeah, but, yeah so that's turning around, and she's actually <laughs> being quite sure all the time. And he apparently does stick his head in the house. And oh. <laughs> Does he? That's so sweet. Oh my God. Yeah. That's great. But Jane, the owner, oh, she was such a legend with this. She, he just had a purple rinse. She bathed him and gave him a purple rinse so that the white of, of oh, so that he would stand out more. Yeah. Oh wow. He just there were more out. retouching requests on the horse than the building. Oh, that's <laughs> so funny. That's really funny. Oh, his face isn't 
supposed to be that dark. Or <laughs> <laughs> but I do love um, your consistency in this set, your color grading, if I can call it that, right. for this entire set is just fantastic. Um, very muted hues, but you yeah. made sure to not over mute the warmth in the brick, this sort of, it's sort of a consistent pop of color throughout of this warm brick. Warm so brick. you were yeah. careful not to kill that, which is brilliant. Over, over two days. So I was there for sunrise for the true front of the house mm -hmm. and then shot all day. And then I went back and shot another day and got the sunset on the other side so that <clears throat> The images would work so yeah different lighting conditions but they were very favorable across the two days so very lucky um but again having that scout before and kind of estimating when it's going to be game on for each area there's so much to get through <laughs> yeah absolutely so scouting um i i love to do that as well it just gives me time to sort of marinate and and some planning um can make the difference between eh and yes. whoa um because yes. when you're scouting you you may see things in the moment that you didn't realize were going to happen and it's like okay when that happens i want that um yes. but it seems like a lot of this was also just like you said it with the girl and her pony right place right time yeah. um so how much you, go ahead sorry you go so how much would you say how, how many of these shots out of the final set would you say are a product of planning ahead and how much are just like, you know, seeing it in the moment? Hmm. Uh, all of the main compositions are, were planned ahead. Okay. I knew that I needed that straight on with the mirror image um, with, the, with the steel. I needed the reflection of the old building. But there's that selfie with me with the three dogs. That's actually me there. Um, oh, you okay. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Yeah. So oh. I was getting them, getting them to rally around and I was thinking about maybe I need to retouch out myself and the other dogs and the architect was like, no, leave it, leave it. You know, it's great. Um, so that, that was organic, but I knew that I needed that composition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting. This is really interesting um, architecture. However, again, to Emma's point, the ones that stick with you are the ones that have emotional impact. And if, if there's a space that's devoid of life, there's not much emotional impact. Imagine this, yeah. if this shot did not have you and the dogs in it, and it was yeah. just the building. The building yeah. is interesting, but would it stick with me? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Not not to yeah. down the architect at all. Um, yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But I'm so glad that they had the trust and confidence in you to follow your instincts and produce this for them. It's a little risky. Sometimes people aren't sure about yeah. having people or things in the shots. Um, yeah. So that's a great vote of confidence that that they oh, they, they they gave gave me free free run um, after I'd nailed you know, the 10 or so that they needed for their documentation purposes. Gotcha. So it was complete trust. So there's the one in the garage with the dog in the shadow. That dog followed me around all day, just <laughs> dropping a tennis ball in front of my tripod, you know. Oh. <laughs> and I'm actually holding a tennis ball above the camera, you know. Hey, hey, hey. I will throw it for you. Just stand there. Stand there. Oh, he did um, a good job. And again, that's just chasing, chasing that light. Um, it yeah. just makes See, the photo, it, it completes the composition, it adds balance and a touch of life if he weren't there. Again, yeah. it's interesting. It's really interesting to have almost, it looks like an original historic farmhouse kind of thing. Yeah, 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 All right. absolutely. And then they absolutely. did an addition, sort of contemporary edition and updates, yeah. it seems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it. so extensive and impressive. Uh, very lucky to have that project in Tasmania. Yeah. It is really cool design. Um, I love the marriage of clean contemporary with the more time worn kind of, yeah. um, you know, cozy stuff. Very cool design. But again, if that doggy weren't there, it wouldn't quite be the same. <laughs> yeah. And this, this dog, I was doing the twilight of the rear facade and I kept coming out, dropping the ball by my tripod and just oh. knocking the tripod. There's like the pink oh, hues no. one. I was like, go away. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh no, someone locked up the dog. Yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So funny. 
Well, it turned yeah. out great. So you said this was all natural light, no flash no pops whatsoever. Wow, no. this is great. No. Fantastic. So I want to see if I can find an example where you have, uh, let's see, you do not have, I'm going to check your work now and see if you yeah. bloom around your window frames and you don't. <laughs> You don't. No. So, uh, what do you do? so here, I'm um, just going to have a look. Well, it was quite overcast. I was like fist pumping actually going, yes, the light is so beautiful and soft for the internal work. <laughs> it is. It is. It's great. Um, but if I would have had sensor bloom, I would have penned in some of the, some colour and that would definitely have happened in these. Okay. And, and that's a Barry McKenzie uh learning uh see the black there if there was any bloom i just would have got the pen tool and then a solid color layer um, and painted that on and yeah. just like airbrushed it yep 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 maybe, maybe cha change the uh the mode to darken mode or multiply mm -hmm. um lower the opacity yeah very good yep very nice. I mean, here, was, I mean, the, the light really was just so amazing. It's just pulling out color contamination and increasing contrast where it's needed, um, bumping the whites a bit. Yep. You, you really oh, lucked this out is with one of my favorite, favorite, favorite shots, this one. Um, yeah. yeah. So there, it does look like it's a little bit of hard light. Yeah. A little bit of yeah, sun. Yeah, but, but I, but you, I would have, I would have um, used luminosity masks to select the highlights of a darker layer and masked those in. Um, okay. I use Luminosia quite a bit. Okay, I was going to ask if some people create their own luminosity masks, but no. it's just easier with yeah. the plugins, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, great. Very nice. Mm. I mean, and this is a project that once it was published, it just got away. Um, yeah, it's it's been shared. So that's another Everything. question I want I want to explore is this topic of yeah. publication. Um, yeah. Is that something that you pitched to editors, or did the architects already kind of have that lined up? The the architects have that lined up. So they I've got um, another project that I shot earlier this year that I haven't been able to share, and I'm busting to share it. It's for Cumulus as well, um, but they're currently trying to see who will who will publish um, before. We can release. Um, yeah, I'm super, super excited to be able oh, to Oh, that's share great. Those. I just have to wait with my, you know. Uh, so did they kind of have in mind the publications that they wanted to pursue? And if so, did that sort of inform the way you shot it? No, uh, they, I shoot how I shoot. Um, yeah. Uh, and then they've just hit up who they'd who they'd like to have featured by. Got it. See who's a good fit and who isn't. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I think there ended up being a narrative with, with Liv, though, so that kind of happened on the fly, the daughter, um, you know, her being the main human element in this shoot. Mm -hmm. um, and that, and she was happy to do it. And mm -hmm. yeah. 15 yeah. minutes of fame. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so cute so there you have a little bit of blue it was a nice sunnier day so you let some that blue the, be there that was, the, that was the sunrise uh so just ah. yeah very nice the other side mm. beautiful beautiful set um yeah it's a but that's it's, really you know they gave me two whole days it's uh, it's what i try and say to some of my clients now if you want if you want the best images, you need to be there to, to witness it, to, yeah, you need time. You need time with the project. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, especially shooting with natural light, you know, um, yeah. I wish... I wish the sun was our mobile strobe that I could put here and put there where, when I needed it to be there, but you are at the mercy of mother nature. Yeah. And it's yeah. sometimes a hurry up and wait kind of a game. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. It absolutely. I find that when I was doing the, the, the twilight there, just looking at the back of this building and it's just, it's a meditative process waiting for the light. It is. Uh, and then when you've come into blue light, 
it's done and you pack up and go home it's it's yeah it happens so quick too. It just, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's such a narrow, win- yep, very narrow <laughs> window of that magic, yeah. magic time. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to move on to the other project, which is, here we go Floating Sauna Blue Derby by Licht Architecture. There we go. And again, what I notice about this set is fantastic consistency in color grading. It looks like you had, over, again, is it two days? This was a day and a half. Yeah. Day and a half. Okay. Yeah. Good. So yeah. it looks like one overcast and one sunny. Yeah, that's right. And I was so, so happy for the overcast morning. Yeah. Uh, but I started this shoot late in the afternoon. So that's when we did all of the model work straight up. Oh, yeah. This is probably my favorite image of this year, actually. Amazing. Uh, mm-hmm. I had frozen toes. Oh, <laughs> so, so cold. Really? But Nigel mm-hmm. and I just went in and lit, lit the fire in the sauna and just that smoke plume coming up. But I was hoping for uh, the sunrise to come through and come through that mist and get beautiful, oh. shot, mm-hmm. you know, golden light. That That was what I had envisaged for this shot, but. I'm still exceptionally happy with how this one came. That's okay. Bad weather makes some really cool shots. And yeah. again, because you are getting an overcast gray day, it works yeah. with the architecture. It's a black and yes. white building. Yeah, very yin-yang. And yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it works. It just works. Yeah. Did you so lucky. Did you saturate the green out of the trees a little bit? Or excuse me, would. desaturate? Yes, I would. I would have for sure. But I, I tend what I do sometimes is do a black and white layer and turn that to soft light, and that will take out some of the color saturation. Mm, interesting. Uh, and then dial back the opacity. So that's what gives me some of that punch sometimes. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'll have to try yeah. that. That's a good idea. <laughs> Give me ideas, yeah. there, girly. So cool. So tell me a little bit about this architecture. Is it uh, like a warming shed and a, what is it? <laughs> so the black building is the sauna. So it's a wood fired sauna. Okay. The white building mm-hmm. um, is the change room. Um, there's currently a, a mural being painted um, to go inside of that space. Mm-hmm. Now, so I think Nigel's going to get me to go back and do a summer shoot, which I'm really excited for. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is first thing in the morning and, and the, the water is just beautifully still. Um, and that's me in the building, you know. I, I, I love to work alone in a way. Um, yeah, I, I get more, I feel more connected to the process without people in my ear. <laughs> yep, I totally uh, another reason why I don't do weddings or, or <sighs> so much. Um, I, self-proclaimed <laughs> introvert, <laughs> right? Yeah. Totally yeah. get it. Yep, totally yeah. get it. You kind of get um, in the zone a little bit. Um, yes, absolutely. And there's a serenity here because this was just before lockdown. Um, and this is a, a busy mountain bike area. It's full of mountain bikers and tourists usually, um, but it, there was nobody about. Um, we had it all to ourselves and um, mm. there's, I think he can sense that as well. Yeah, there it's like a, there really anybody else out there, yeah. Right. Yeah. The, the pictures have an eerie silence, but a cool eerie silence too. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I, what I love too is um, the mist making this just a little bit blown out on this upper uh, left corner creates really interesting, basically positive and negative space. It becomes a very graphic, right. graphic. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Sometimes I think when, when us, I can say for myself, just starting out and you're learning um, the technique and the, the rules, right. You're learning yeah. about dynamic range and rescuing the dynamic range and don't let things to be, be too blown out and don't let shadows be too shadowy. And we get a little yeah. obsessive about dynamic range, but in this case, and we'll see with a shot later that I love, um, you let it blow out and it creates yeah. a great positive and negative space. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really, I definitely build. become loose, looser with that the, the longer I, I do it. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I it's interesting. I when I majored in fine arts, they they told us first you have to learn the rules, then yeah. you're allowed to break them. Yeah, yeah. So I think you've done that. I think you've definitely done that. Very interesting. Love love the texture of the tree in the foreground. Again, just- And this was, this was my first job working for this architect as well. So one, we hadn't met. There were two models coming that I hadn't met either. And we just went right into it. So this was another one of those. Really? Um, physically sick <laughs> driving to job oh. um but i but i i um said that i pulled jace aside and said look i'm really nervous and he goes you know what i used to be an opening batsman and you know for cricket and i have the, the same thing so i get you and it's okay oh. um i think owning it you know i is it, good and then i use that adrenaline to <laughs> to get me through yeah. It's true. And you know what, it's kind of like an endearing thing to see that we're all just human. Yeah. <laughs> we all yeah. have fears and insecurities and to, um, you know, and I'm sure a lot of architects happen. Most creatives are introverts, most of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they're probably not super social either. So to say, hey, the, I'm like a ball of nerves right now, probably. Yeah is yeah. a little bit endearing and just to be and I usually say look can I just fire mm -hmm. some off and just get into it you know yeah. I, I do loosen up a little yeah yeah and I go, these first ones we might not use but I just need to get around it and and, and just just yeah I love that that's a great idea mm -hmm. I, I should try that I that's something actually we used to when I took figure drawing um, they started us out with two second drawings, then five second, then 10 second, then one minute, but yeah. forcing yourself to go faster, loose, it just ugh, loosened you up. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, Made a huge difference. Yeah, they, they, these, this couple were all loved up. They were gorgeous. <laughs> really, really easy to work with. And so the, the architects was... chose them. Yeah, they were um, good mates. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Got it. Yeah. Do, are you ever in a situation where you are, are hiring the model or trying to find a model? Um, that hasn't been the case so far. No, no. But for this one, um, I would have had a few people in mind. But I think there's, there's a looseness to this because there is a familiarity there. Yeah. Um, and I prefer that to a, a paid model any day. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I know. I prefer to work with those that I know as well. <laughs> um, the two that I've that I've used are well. Actually, one of us is a personal friend, and the other is a client. She's the <laughs> she's the marketing yeah. director at a, an architect that um, that I do some work for. So right, right. kind of funny, pulling double duty there. So that's a good shot. <laughs> This is because she can do it. It was like, do you want me to do a handstand? I was like, okay. She must be into oh, yoga. So. Is this yoga? Yeah, um, yeah. she's an instructor. Yep. Oh, yep. good for her. And, and a massage therapist. Ah. I was like, I feel a little close to the edge. And she's like, no, it's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love that. Again, not just the use of her, but what I love about this shot too. Again, this is where we uh, diverge from real estate. Real estate is you have an unobstructed uh, two-point perspective shot of the whole building. But in yes. this case, you are letting this branch be in the foreground. Yeah. Um, and it's not bothersome visually at all. It's adding depth. Um, and it looks mm. like you've got a little bit of a shallow depth of field. So it doesn't yeah. matter that it's there. It's giving me a sense of depth and my eye is going straight to where it should, which is the building yeah. and the person using yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really brilliant. This one, this one was really important. I did a site visit here as well. So this is maybe two hours drive from where I live. Mm -hmm. And for mm -hmm. my own preparation, because it's surrounded by water, I needed to know about access and how far I could get away. Like, could I hit it with my 200 mil lens or um, scouting this was really important. I just would not have liked to have turned to this, up to this one blind. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Understood. Understood. Mm. So oh, they're getting all cozy. 
This is the owner and this is a very special image for me because this was the ceremonial lighting of the fire. So it was the first time it was lit and, Aww. you know, he's putting water on, on, on the stones. Um, yeah, and, and it's, it's real. <laughs> it happened and I just was there to take it. So, it's a real yeah, moment. And letting, yeah. and letting letting the shadows go. Yeah. It's exactly. him and the sauna, which is where I want the attention to be. Mm. Exactly. So I, I, I love this kind of shot because, again, it's, it's becoming a, um, not just a, a pure architectural shot, but it's, it's crossing that line into documentary style, um, yeah. lifestyle, um, that, well, that nice blend. Yeah. It's a nice, yeah. well-rounded yeah. blend of styles. Yeah. Yeah, um, that I think is just magical. Yeah. And it was tricky to, you know, the door, the door to the sauna is quite small and I'm pretty sure this would have been my 24 tilt shift, you know, so I'm shifted to the left and I didn't want to crop off any toes, so you had to have his legs in, you know, the bench at the bottom left corner that you can see there. Um, so all of these things are going through your mind while you want him to be going through the process of um, being in the sauna as if I'm not there. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> and not saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got to focus. Yeah. 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 Let me get a focus point. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. I hear you. Do that natural thing again. Will you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, good. So now you get a little bit of sun. Very nice. So I just love again with the different uh, conditions and weather that you have it manages, and I love that. See, this is the shot I was talking about. Oh, right, letting it blow, yeah. Letting yeah. it blow out. It's this great positive and negative space. Yeah. And did you enhance this solar, I guess, flare? No, no. Okay, just natural. That's fantastic. So letting that flare a little bit, you are, there's haze, and it's okay. You know the other thing I love about this this little bit of solar flare, which many, yeah. again, when we're just starting out and we're thinking no. about the so-called <laughs> perfections, yeah. you know, how many OCD people would have been like, ah, you know, Photoshop that yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. You know, why? Yeah. It's real. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It's magic. Yeah, I, I mean, that is, that is pushing pushing the image to its, to its, its, its limits for sure. Um, and there was a lot of, you know, standing up and bobbing down just enough that, yeah, yeah you can. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. Love this yeah. shot. So just all together then, you have this set that is like a perfect, it's like two puzzle pieces that complete each other with two weather conditions and then the two um, different sets of color grading, basically, yeah. for yeah. each condition. Um, yeah. they, they complete each other. I think uh, the picture of the couple sitting on the end next yeah. to the steps there, that, that's the architect and his partner. Um, oh, okay. Um, okay. Like, Come on, sit there. And, um, <laughs> so there's that documentation for, for him as well. Yeah, yeah. I love it. That, that's that portrait of fusion that I still enjoy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it makes, again, it makes a ton of difference. Um, these types of images are the ones that stick with you um so i know once people see this that's going to stick with them as well so that's all she wrote is, is there anything you'd like to add is there anything let me let me end it um and um i guess wrap it up this way two questions lightning round here um, where do you see yourself going from here would be one of them. And do you have any advice? There are a lot of um, budding photographers out there, young ladies included, that would like to get into architectural photography. Do you have any advice for them? So first, where do you see your, yourself going? Um, probably still Tasmania based for the next 12 months to two years. I'll see how that grows and develops. There's some amazing projects here, amazing designers here. Um, and my son's still in high school, so I'm staying as local as I can. Um, getting more help, <laughs> either logistically uh, or back end, um, yeah, helping with 
P, the PA side of it, you know, I'm always behind the emails and the business side. And yeah, being having the opportunity to create more work like those those two projects, that's 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 the total dream for me. Yeah. And like communicating to clients that these are a day and a half to two day shoots and that is what is required. So there's that furthering education of the clients as you progress together. Mm-hmm. Um, but as advice for women trying to get in, form a hustle, hit us up. I might not reply straight away, but yeah, hit me up on Instagram. Yeah, like most people are willing to share. That's what I found as I've developed. If you ask in the right way, um, we're more than happy to share our knowledge and support. And we're all still on our path, a different trajectory, it's different, you know. Yeah. And we're all going to self-doubt. I still self-doubt. Um, that's part of doing what we do. Right? I think if you walked in and just like, yeah, I've got this, you're not doing it right. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> Well, my lady, this was an absolute pleasure. Again, thank you for being brave, you know, as an introvert. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. Like, oh, oh, oh. You did okay. <laughs> you did great. I really appreciate it. And again, I know you're so busy. So it was so sweet of you um, to take your time out to talk to us a little bit and um, wish you all the best in the future. I think you're going to continue to do great things and you're going to have many more unicorns. Don't worry. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Many unicorns. So uh, and I hope to have them too. You really, you've been inspiring me. Even just the last few days I've been editing and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try this Angie style. <laughs> so I'm just, well, when, you, when you inbox me, I was like, me? <laughs> of course you. Oh, you said Silly lady. No, you're doing great and you're going to continue to do great. So again, thank you so much and um, all the best in the future. Thank you so much, Kim. Okay, take care. <laughs>